Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Peter Johnson here with Real Agriculture at Wheat Pete, and we're talking corn again and strip tillage. So you all know that I'm a big strip till proponent because we simply have to do a better job of two things. One, phosphorus management, and two, reducing soil erosion. But we can't give up yield. Meanwhile, it's easy for a guy like me to talk about strip tillage, but doing it, actually making it work, the mechanics of it, that's a whole different thing. So we're all out there in search of the perfect berm. We're at Elgin Soil and Crop today. They've put together a great strip till demonstration, and we're going to look at what the do's and don'ts are of trying to build that perfect berm. So we start off with a strip crat. This machine is actually made here in Ontario. Cool that many of these machines are made in Ontario, but there's lots of them made in the U.S. as well. They all do a good job. A shank machine. You can see that the coulter up front slicing the residue. These are tough conditions because the weeds have gotten up big. As the unit comes through, you'll see, yet yeah, those tall weeds with the rainfall, we're actually plugging up the berming discs. So we have the coulters to slice the residue, then the the residue managers take that residue out of the row area. We, the shank loosens and we're really trying to get that loose soil built up in that six inch wide or eight inch wide by six inch deep berm. As we come in on that berm, you can see not any higher than I'd like. The depth is good. When we dig down, he is six inches with the shank, but gosh, I'd really like that berm to be a little bit higher. You can see a little bit of residue coming outside of the, of the berm as well. We really would like no soil to leave that berm whatsoever. So next up we have the Salford unit and we've all seen lots of these Salford units. This one in particular is set up just like an RTS, only now we have shanks going through. So lots of coulters to do some tillage, some loosening and these disc killers at the back to make the berm. And so we're gonna run this unit both with the shanks up first. So here we're running with the shanks up and when we turn around at the far end, gonna put the shanks down and see what kind of a job that does. You can see now that under these conditions, it's pretty heavy clay soil, and when he puts those shanks down and running them quite deep to try to get that six inch depth, gosh, a lot of tillage, that's almost full width tillage, not really getting into the strip configuration that we'd like. Although under different conditions, different soil conditions, you might, when you look at the strips without the shanks, that's pretty nice. It's wide. You could easily do twin rows on top of it. It's fairly high. One of the concerns, there is a little bit of a trench where the disc killers have pulled that dirt in. If you're on a significant slope, you do that in the fall, the water can start to follow that trench at the edge. And so we'd really have to watch out that we didn't cause a problem there. So this is a little bit of a different idea in terms of strip tillage. This is a, a cedar, just a, a drill, an air cart with a drill. And what we're going to try to do with this, it's the bio strip till. So we're not actually going to build a strip with the unit itself. Instead, we're going to plant different cover crop species in two of those units where the 30 inch corn row will go. And it might be a daikon radish, nice deep roots to create a loose zone there. And we might put cereal rye in between. And so it's the concept of bio strip till as opposed to doing it with the iron. Okay, so this is the other style of machine. This is a Don Pluribus, and it's a Coulter style machine. So we're no longer running a shank to suck us in the ground and to loosen that ground up, and some significant differences between Coulter machines and shank machines. Speed with the shank machine, we go too fast and we blow soil out, and so we generally tend to run them slower. With a Coulter machine, we have to have enough power to get some speed up to get the coulters to throw that dirt and do the job that we want it to do. He's doing 9.5 miles an hour here. That's probably a little bit fast because the residue managers, the trash whippers up front are actually throwing a little bit of dirt outside of the, the strip area. And we certainly don't want to see that because anytime you throw dirt out, it's going to mean less dirt in the berm. You look at that berm though, a little bit shallow here. So he's only about three and a half inches. We'd like him to get deeper. That's a weight thing with a coulter unit but gosh you look at that berm very very nice berm you can see it's it's got good fluff to it it's five inches tall it's it's probably six or seven inches wide maybe not quite wide enough to do twin rows if you want to do twin rows but in terms of a single 30 inch corn row that's doing a pretty nice job just need to get a little deeper 
So this is the Orthman unit, the Orthman One Tripper, and this is actually the grower's unit, and he set it up, and he's only spring strip till. Really odd on heavy clay soil to run a shank machine and be only spring strip till. But you can see the rolling baskets here, and so that's going to try and break up those lumps, and he's also pulling a packer. Now that's kind of an interesting thought process, but in the spring, we really don't want lumps. We've talked about whether we have it lumpy or fine. In the spring, you definitely don't want lumps. And many other growers actually thinking about ways to get that packed down and not lose too much moisture in the spring. So we look here, he's running nicely at six inches deep. His width is good, but no height whatsoever to that berm, of course, because he's running both the rolling baskets and the roller behind. In the fall, if you're going to use that, you drop the roller and you would actually lift those rolling baskets, I think, so that we got that berm built up. He's leaving a nice deep six inch slice. He's actually gonna plant twin rows each side of that slice and allow the roots to go down into that trench and pick up the fertilizer because he's blowing fertilizer down into that trench. And that's a really another important consideration with all this, how we manage that fertilizer it gives us an excellent opportunity to do that. So there you have it. Lots of different ideas. By the way, as you watched each unit go through the field, shank, coulter, I don't care, it's often the nut behind the wheel that makes the difference. Any of these strip tillers can do a great job if you set them up right. What are we really looking for? So in the fall, remember, the, the experienced guys, they want us to be six inches wide as a minimum and six inches deep. I'm surprised at that, but that's what they tell me. So a six by six zone, we want to have that berm nicely built up. I'd really like to have five inches of height if I can. Might mean you have to lift the rolling baskets as well. I don't want to see any channels or trenches at the edge of that berm because if you're on a side hill and you get a big rainstorm or a snow melt, whoosh, that can really start to channel water and blow the berm out. And the other thing that I really think you want to focus in on is how rough do you actually want that? Some lumps there in the fall are not a bad thing because they will help to slow that water. If it's too fine in the fall, it's actually probably not a good thing. The reverse in the spring, we want it to be really nice and fine. And that's why at the end there, you saw Stan's unit where he's pulling the packer to find it all down. And we don't want to lose that moisture. Everybody, everybody will have an absolutely different opinion of what the perfect berm is. But those are some of the things to go through, some of the thought process, figure it out. Somehow we have to make this work. Go strip till.